Good morning, Ravens, and welcome to this edition of ONW Now. On today's episode, we're bringing you a recap of the blood drive, a preview of the play, <coughs> and this week's top Brock nominees. For Brady Armstrong, I'm Molly Murphy. I can't do this all on my own. No, I know I'm no Superman. I'm no Superman. Stuka held their spring blood drive last week. Candace and Pedro have a recap of the event. Last Tuesday, Olathe Northwest Student Council held its annual spring blood drive in the Flex Theater. A nationwide blood shortage made the blood drive especially important. Jim Sajevic, the donor recruitment representative, explains what was responsible for the shortage. Right now, the weather is responsible for the shortage. Uh, the cold weather and then the snowstorms that have caused blood drives to cancel, not just in Kansas City, but nationwide. Over 700 blood drives have been canceled in America in the last three weeks because of bad weather. The final count of units of blood collected was 591 units, nine units short of Stuka's goal of 600 units, which would have broken the national record. Sajevic explains why Northwest blood drives are important for the community. 18 to 20 percent of the blood that local hospitals use is collected at high schools or colleges. And when you consider the tradition that Olathe Northwest has, the Raven Nation has embraced blood drives. Last year it became the first school to collect over 500 units of blood in one calendar year. With today's blood drive, they're probably going to collect somewhere between 575 and 580 units. So that blood, since every unit collected can save two lives, is going to save over a thousand lives. That's why the blood drives are important. Joe Kaliga describes why he made the important decision to donate blood. Uh, I decided to donate blood just because I feel like if you're eligible, you should. I mean, and I want to contribute to, like, making our schools set a national record, so. Lately, there has been controversy as to whether Stuco went too far in its efforts. Here's what Olivia Young, Blood Drive Chair, had to say about the criticism. We've been getting a lot of criticism saying that we were way too passionate and we were pushing too hard. However, we only have the school's best interest at heart. We were just trying to understand who we needed to appeal to more. If you were too afraid, we would have helped those people feel a little bit more comfortable about that. But people just took that the wrong way. They got really defensive about it. And we are just trying to get the students' best interest. Young also took this opportunity to thank those who donated. We are super proud and really grateful of those who did donate. You helped us not only with our name and our reputation, but you also helped those people who needed the blood. You're doing what the blood drive means at the core, helping those out, stepping out of your comfort zone, and really putting forth an effort to change society. In the end, Stugo pulled off another successful blood drive. This year, the Raven Nation saved over a thousand lives. However, we can always do more. Give me any excuse for not donating blood. Picture yourself at the foot of a hospital bed where your mother or sister or close friend needs blood. Will those excuses hold up? I don't think so. For NW Now, this has been Pedro Von Simpson. For more information on the blood drive, check out the Raven Daily. Now let's take it to Game Day Northwest. The boys basketball team took on crosstown rival at the North Friday night. Brady Dinshin has the recap. The Ravens took on crosstown rival Olathe North last Friday night. The Ravens got the jump early when a pre-tip technical foul was called on their Eagles that sent Easton Cook to the line. The Ravens after that went on an 11-0 run. Finally the Eagles scored on a fast break alley-oop that helped them get back into the game. It was competitive as the Ravens slowly but surely dominated the Eagles but Olathe North didn't lose hope as they fouled the Ravens to conserve time, but it failed in the end. Easton Cook led the team in scoring with 18 points, ending in a 46-53 Raven victory that will propel them into sub-state competition. Come support your Ravens as they take on the Lathe East Thursday night. This is Brady Jensen, now back to the desk. Today, our Raven dance team will make their way down to Florida, where they will compete to clinch their third national title. Senior Officer Rachel Majette tells us about their past experiences at Nationals. This will be our third year going to Nationals. In the past two years, we've gotten first in team performance, and then we've gotten third in Jazz. Since their last competition in January, they have been working on polishing their routines. 
now we're kind of working like super hard on cleaning like specific stuff in our dances and really like digging deep and seeing like how we can make it that much better so it can win a national title. The dance team is facing different competition than they have normally faced at nationals. This year our competition is actually a lot different than it has been any other years. For mix, a lot of our competition has moved down to other categories. So now we're focused a lot on our three biggest rivals in jazz, which is Shawnee Mission, East, Blue Valley Northwest, and Olathe North. They will also be competing against teams around the nation and even the world in order to bring back that national title. Rachel explains how the competition works. We go through prelims, and if you make prelims, you go to finals. And then if we win our category in team performance, we get to perform internationally. The girls enjoy the traditions and memories that they share with their coach. My favorite thing is probably our coach gives us a really good pep talk before we go on and she always gives us pixie sticks. It's kind of her thing and it just like pumps us up a lot and our team energy is always really good. So, The dance team embarks on their journey to nationals at 6. Make sure you wish them good luck today. For ONW Now, I'm Allison Cook. Thanks, Allison. We'd also like to wish you good luck to all those bowlers competing in state this week. For Kyle Smith, I'm Reed Smith. Now back to the desk. Thanks, guys. The theater department's presenting A Midsummer's Night Dream this Friday and Saturday. Tickets are seven bucks. Dooley Lindstra has a preview. Things face and vile, holding no quantity. Love can transpose to form and dignity. Let the audience look to their eyes. I will move stars. Then I must be dilating. Why should the Tony Cross for Obron? How can these things in me seem scorn to you? And are you grown so high in his esteem because I'm so dwarfish and so low? Very tragical. Idiot free. But jealous Oberon would have the child, night of his train to chase the forest wild. And all things shall be peace. Chloe Cowart has this week's top prop box nominees. Dr. Cross and the Four Club are excited to recognize this month's Raven Prop Box nominees for February 2014. Our first Prop Box nominee is Cole Louse. He fouled and returned someone else's lost keys. Tatum Heller used a pass to get out of class to get her jacket to loan to a fellow student for the day. Our second Raven Prop Box nominee is Katie Halterman. She bought a fellow Raven lunch this month. And the top prop goes to Bailey Cruz. She always stands up and speaks up for others. That's all you have for you on this week's edition of ONW Now. For Molly Murphy, I'm Brady Armstrong. Have a fabulous week, Ravens.